Welcome to a short video on accounting for property, plant and equipment using the revaluation model. Specifically, how to account for revaluations of property, plant and equipment. There are three key issues in relation to the accounting for property, plant and equipment. These are, one, when to recognise assets, two, the determination of the carrying amount of the asset in question, and three, the calculation of depreciation and impairment charges. This video focuses on the determination of an asset's carrying amount subsequent to initial recognition. Now, as we know, property, plant and equipment values can change over time. AASB 116, specifically paragraph 29, allows companies one of two choices in accounting for property, plant and equipment after initial recognition. The first choice is the cost model. The second is the revaluation model. This video will look at the revaluation model. So a company chooses to use a revaluation model. How does it put it into practice? First, revaluations must occur with sufficient regularity to ensure the carrying value and the fair value of the asset do not differ materially at the end of the reporting period. This will depend on the type of property, plant and equipment in question. In addition, if a company chooses to revalue an item of property, plant and equipment, the company must choose to use a revaluation model for all assets in that class. For example, if it chooses to revalue one piece of land it owns, it must use the revaluation model for all the land it owns. Paragraph 37 provides details of what the separate asset classes are. Once a company makes a decision to revalue an asset, the asset is to be revalued to its fair value. Fair value is usually determined by a market-based appraisal of the asset. See AASB 13 Fair Value for more information. If the asset's fair value is greater than its current carrying value, it is an upwards revaluation. According to paragraph 39, this increment, the difference between fair value and carrying value, is recognised in other comprehensive income, specifically as a revaluation surplus. So the entry would be debit asset, credit revaluation surplus. If the asset's fair value is less than its current carrying value, it is a downwards revaluation. According to paragraph 40, this decrement, the difference between fair value and carrying value, is recognised in other profit and loss. So the entry would be debit revaluation loss, credit asset. Note the asymmetric treatment of upwards and downwards revaluations. Upwards revaluations go to equity, whilst downwards revaluations go to profit. This is another example of conservative accounting embedded in the standards. However, if you are reversing a previous revaluation, you put an upwards revaluation through profit and loss until you have cleared the previous downwards revaluation. The opposite holds true for a downwards revaluation reversing a previous upwards revaluation. In that case, the downwards revaluation goes through OCI. For example, you have purchased land which is a non-depreciable property plant and equipment and you've purchased it for $100,000. Using the revaluation model, its fair value after one year was $120,000. This increment would be recognised through equity, so you debit land $20,000 and credit revaluation surplus $20,000. Then, one year later, it is revalued down to $90,000. Normally, this would be debit loss credit land. However, because this is a reversal of a previous revaluation, the first 20,000 goes through OCI. Once you've cleared the previous revaluation, the remainder goes through profit and loss, hence debit loss 10,000. Using a second example, and again with land purchased for $100,000. Using the revaluation model, its fair value after one year was 90,000. This decrement would be recognized through profit and loss, so you debit loss 10,000 and credit land 10,000. Then, one year later, it is revalued up to 120000 Normally, this would be debit property plant equipment credit revaluation surplus. However, because this is a reversal of a previous revaluation, the first 10000 goes through profit and loss. Once you have cleared the previous revaluation, the remainder goes through equity, hence credit revaluation surplus. Turning now to a longer example, in this example, we have a depreciable asset purchased for $1 million. It has a 10-year useful life and is zero residual. After two years, it is revalued to $500,000. The first thing to determine is the carrying value of the asset. The depreciation expense is $100,000 per year, so after two years, the total accumulated depreciation is 200000 
Deducting this from the cost of the asset gives us a carrying value of 800,000. This is greater than the fair value of 500,000, so we have a downwards revaluation of 300,000. Before the entry for the revaluation is made, accumulated depreciation is cleared out. You do this by debiting accumulated depreciation and credit asset, the balance of accumulated depreciation. This doesn't alter the balance sheet, but just makes the asset account easier to work with. Then debit loss 300 and credit asset 300,000. The next piece of information is that two years later, the asset is revalued to a fair value of $900,000. So, again, we compare this to its current carrying value. For this, cost is the amount that the asset was revalued to previously. In this instance, that is $500,000. Accumulated depreciation is 125, which is two years of depreciation of 62,500. Remember, you've got to adjust the annual depreciation expense once you have revalued the asset. This gives a carrying value of $375,000, which is lower than the fair value of $900,000. This means that it is an upwards revaluation. Before the revaluation entries, remember to clear out depreciation. The asset increases by $525,000, which is the $900,000 minus $375,000, so debit asset $525,000. Normally for a revaluation increment, revaluation surplus would be credited 525,000. But because this is a reversal of a previous downwards revaluation, the first 300,000 goes to profit and loss, i.e. credit gain, to reverse the previous loss. Once the loss has been reversed, the remaining 225,000 goes to revaluation surplus as normal. And that wraps up accounting for revaluations of property, plant and equipment. The key takeaway points are, one, revaluations occur regularly. Two, if one asset in the asset class is revalued, all assets in that class get revalued. Three, upwards revaluations go to equity, whilst four, downwards revaluations go to profit and loss. Five, however, if you are reversing a previous revaluation, things do work out a little differently. Six, Remember to remove depreciation prior to the revaluation. And finally, seven, recalculate the annual depreciation expense after the revaluation. I hope that helps. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can either leave them here on this video or tweet me at Dr. Dave Bond.